Envy passed me one of these last interview. I ain't, I, what's up? We sure about this? Yes, water. All right, man. Over a little bit. This way. Yes, sir. I'll move the other chair. Thank you. Okay, okay. Where do you want it, Keith? Yeah, you can just move it over. This is the camera right here. So if you just shift over. Okay, okay, okay. Got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. And then you can put the microphone right there. Uh, no doubt. Mic check from you, bro. Mic check one, two, one, two. Dr. Umar Ifatunde, King Kong Consciousness, <laughs> Notorious RBG, <laughs> Prince of Pan Africanism. Love it. All right, keep that same energy. Let's get it. Hey, it's one, three, five. The beat, mommy stood up one for hip hop, RB, and the Breakfast Club. Papa Keith alive. Um, this. This gentleman has an open invitation anytime he comes to Miami to come see me. He always takes advantage of it. I appreciate it. Way before he was doing the Breakfast Club, I might yes, add. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's been yes, coming sir. Yes, to, to uh, Miami and to this radio yes, station. Sir. It's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, Dr. Umar Johnson in the building. Yes, indeed. Miami was good. South Florida, I'm in the building. Come on out tomorrow, 12 to 7. It's a celebration. Direct descendants of Africans enslaved in america we're gonna be at 2820 northwest 167 terrace tomorrow saturday from 12 to 7 dr umar speaks at four it's going to be games food vendors a lot of good information for you outside under this beautiful leo sun shout out to all my lions and lionesses out there this is our season right now and i'm just glad to be back again that's what's up and i'm actually going to be able to make it to this event because although we do the interviews i never get a chance to make it to the event so i'm excited yes, sir. about that yes, sir. Um, so listen, you're going to the blackest uh, city that we have. Ah, Miami Gardens, <laughs> Miami for, the Gardens. State, for the state, for the state. Yeah? That is, that is correct, okay. man. Okay. More black people in Miami Gardens than any other city here in South Florida, man. So Powerful. it's a beautiful uh, place to be, man. So, you know, usually when you come in, we get to talk about what's happening. So, yes, sir. listen, fresh off of it, the announcement with uh, Kamala Harris. Yes, sir. I would love to know how do you feel about... Uh, Joe Biden stepping down and mm -hmm. Kamala Harris stepping up. Me personally, I believe the shadow government that really controls this country because this country is not controlled by the Democrats or the Republicans, not the Supreme Court, the Congress, or the President. It's a shadow government. That includes the National Security Agency, that includes the Trilaterals, that includes the Council on Foreign Relations, that includes the Federal Reserve, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and so forth and so on. They make the real calls. With that being said, I do believe that they wanted Biden to win a second term but he's not being as successful as they intended he would be amongst the American public. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what forced the step down. Uh, Kamala Harris may be able to pull it off. If you look at her donations, the support that she's gathered, it looks like she might be able to pull it off with only three and a half months to go. My biggest concern though, if Donald Trump loses this race, I'm not too sure uh, the MAGA folks are gonna believe that it was an honest defeat. Mm. And so therefore I anticipate some sort of social unrest, whether he wins or loses, but especially if he loses. Wow, so you mean like America going to It war could America. be. It may not be that bad, but I mean, if January 6th is any indication, mm -hmm. you know, if he loses to a candidate, you know, in her first term running for president, only three months to campaign against a very popular Donald Trump. You know, I always say that Kamala Harris is not as popular as they make her to be, and Donald Trump is not as unpopular as they try to make him to be. So it's going to be quite interesting. It's going to be very interesting. As far as the African-American community go, my brother, you know, the American African people, we're going to lose regardless because we are not organized. The black vote is not organized. As you know, in a democracy, the majority rules. If you are a minority population, you have to organize your vote and speak as one in order to be heard. We're still not doing that. We're going back and forth over who we should vote for, failing to recognize that until the black vote gets organized, 
it'll never benefit us. Can I tell you something at that point? I, I, I do a podcast called That Part Podcast with my co-host, Janae Taylor. I got to shout her out. Yes, sir. Uh, she's been saying the same way how there's Project 2025, mm -hmm. why is there not a black version of Project 2025 mm -hmm. where we can publicly and openly say exactly what we want you know, as mm -hmm, a collective mm -hmm. or some leaders in the black, mm -hmm. um, you know, population could come up and say, this is what we need for our people. That's because we are a group of individuals. We do not move out as a team. There's no solidarity. There's no group agenda. Everyone's pretty much out for themselves. And the other part of that, too, in order for us to make any measurable progress, you know, there has to be some sort of an economic sacrifice. We don't want to sacrifice economically. You know, we don't want to stop spending money on hair. We don't want to stop spending money on vacations. We don't want to stop spending money on Air Jordans and all these expensive, you know, European designer brands. In order for us to get to where we need to go, we have to weaponize our dollar. The black dollar hasn't been weaponized at least since the 1970s. So until we do that, nothing's going to change. These political candidates, they dance to the tune of the people who finance their campaigns. Oh, yeah. And they dance to the tune to the organizations whose vote is organized. We neither use our money nor our strength to demand anything from them, so why should they respond? Well, I'll push back a little only mm -hmm. to say that um, it's many years and billions of dollars in brainwashing oh, that for has sure. been you know, put for why sure. it's such a struggle for black folks to be able to ramp up and get to that point. Now, I know we can't map this out here today. True, 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 true. But what would you say would be a good start for us as a people to at least, you know, get that going. I think, first of all, we have to separate those of us who are truly serious and committed to uh, some sort of radical transformation of the black reality. You got to separate the workers from the intellectual masturbators, mm. you know, because we got a lot of people. They're very intelligent. A lot of what they say is correct, but they plan on participating in no part of the struggle at all. That application of theory, they want no part of it. They are the theoreticians, but they are not the practitioners. So we got to find out who are the practitioners, who are the brothers and sisters on the ground who are going to help us implement a plan. Because far too often, I think we overdepend on college educated Negroes and we over depend on social media influencers to lead the way. And unfortunately, college educated Negroes got too much to lose. And most social media influencers, they're just making them looking to make a YouTube dollar. Wow. I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, yeah. I appreciate it. I definitely wanted to, you know, touch on some current affairs, but we have some other current affairs because uh, you're coming back uh, to South Florida in yes, August. Sir. For yes, sir. Yes, sir. August Florida. 6th. Yes, sir. Uh, Brendan Depper. All right. So can you please talk about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Uh, 2 February 21st is the ago on the very day that Brother Malcolm, El Haj Mali Shabazz, was assassinated. The anniversary of that, Brendan Depp, a 17 year old black boy, assaulted his teacher's assistant because she took his Nintendo Switch. But what nobody, and, and as a result of that, he was charged with a felony, upgraded from juvenile to adult, even though he was 17. What nobody's talking about is that this young man was diagnosed with autism. He was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. He was diagnosed with intermittent explosive disorder. He was diagnosed with ADHD. He was diagnosed with anxiety. He was taking an entire uh, entree of different medications and his IEP, which is the special ed contract between the family and the district, said to never snatch nothing out of his hand. This was in the IEP. Wow. Never snatch anything out of his hand. You will trigger his PTSD. So why did they snatch the video game out of his hand? I'm going to go a step further. Why was Brendan Depper even allowed in that school? As a child with that many type of disabilities, speaking as a school psychologist, do you know where they belong? In a private school. Why was Brendan Depper sitting in a regular public school that didn't have the facilities or the staff to meet his needs? Because those folks in that school didn't want to spend the money on that black boy. And now he can go to school for, excuse me, go to jail for 30 years because of that assault which would have never happened if the teacher would have followed the IEP and at the first court hearing where I was the uh, his, his attorney the defense attorney asked the teacher did you read his IEP guess what she said she never looked at it that's against the law any any staff in school that's working with a disabled child has a need to know about his disability and how they need yes. to interact with him based on that disability. The fact that she did not read it ever, never looked at it, clearly shows you they was out of compliance. So why is he going to jail? The school district should be going to jail. Now, let's put it in context. I'm sure you heard about the other sister whose name I'm forgetting, Florida, who was shot in the stomach by a white woman yes. through a locked door, right, mm -hmm. in front of her children. Mm -hmm. That woman could do 30 years in jail as well. So help me understand how a woman who took a gun and murdered a mother in front of her children through a locked door where there was no threat of harm, can get the same amount of time as a boy who simply punched the teacher. Don't get me wrong. He had no right putting his hands on her. But there's psychological reasons that would explain why that happened. Right. The least of which the fact she didn't fo follow the IEP. 
So how can he go to jail for the exact same time as a woman who committed murder with a firearm? Dr. Umar, what can we do about this situation? What are you looking to do when you come back to Florida about this situation? The one thing we want to do is we want to highlight that special ed children's rights are not being protected, not the black ones. That's number one. And then we want to organize our black parents. A National Independent Black Parent Association is a movement I have to help bring black parents together to fight against these kinds of issues. You know, but our parents got to know their rights. They got to know their rights. Now, Brenda was adopted by two white parents who obviously didn't do a good job because uh, he should have never been in that situation. And, and the mother reached out to me, but I couldn't work with her because I said, if you would have done what you should have done, he would have never been in this situation. So the parents are at fault, adoptive parents, school is at fault, mental health system is at fault, state of Florida is at fault, but unfortunately they're going to try to make him the fall guy. Had we not been involved in this, he would have probably already been sentenced by now. Yeah. But because they know I'm on it, so when I saw the case, I said, I got to do what I can to make sure this young brother do doesn't do 30. I want to give kudos to you because that's how I originally met you. Okay. You were focused on, you know, working with the kids. Yes, sir. Course, Destroying school that school to prison pipeline. Right. So just to see so after all these years. Still with still it. With still with it. it. You know Never saying? quit. Never quit. I want to commend you on that. I want to also give you an opportunity to talk about some things you have coming up or you're dealing with personally that you want to share with the audience. Well, the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, we're happy to say that we're about one or two coats of paint away from being done. We got a couple floors that we got to cover up with some tile and some carpet. And then after that, we'll be applying for our certificate of occupancy. So I'm hoping that by the end of the summer, we, we would have applied for that occupancy and would have received it by late fall at the latest. And then we'll have a grand opening probably the week of Kwanzaa. And this is Philly, right? Uh, Wilmington, Delaware, 30 oh, minutes from Philly. Okay. 30 gotcha. minutes from Philly. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Well, congratulations on that. No, I Appreciate it. The label of yes, sir. We've been working on that. Um, and let's talk about what else, you know, you have going on. You've been touring, you've been moving around. I've uh, been moving message. around, man, moving around. We got Costa Rica for Garvey Day coming up. I might be in Jamaica for Garvey Day. Got the invitation from Irie FM, but they wanted three days. I can't give them three because I already right. promised Costa Rica two. You know what I mean? So I said, you can etch me in for next year or take the Sunday. So I'm going to see what Jamaica says. Would be good to do Costa Rica in Jamaica. You know, we got the Nat Turner Land coming up. Black Consciousness Conference at Eastern Michigan University next weekend. You know, just still pushing a good gospel of Garveyism, you know, solidarity and, 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 and collective economic empowerment. And I just can't wait for the school to get open, bro. You That's know, up, yeah. I'm also going to start doing a lot of healing retreats. You know, we got a lot of people suffering from anxiety, abandonment, abuse, sex abuse, emotional abuse, trauma, you know, uh, 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 self-mutilation, suicide. This next step is I want to build schools and help our people heal themselves. So we're going to be doing a bunch of retreats for folks with a variety of conditions all across the country. How do you feel about um, other brothers in the fight, like you are, but may see things a little differently from you, putting so much pressure on you? Do, do you feel like, because um, this is a conversation that, that, that I've been having lately. Yes, sir. Um, just like, listen, we don't have the luxury <laughs> to be able to fight amongst ourselves. We don't. When we have we don't. so many others that are attacking or looking to, you know, uh, knock us down by our knees. Yes, sir. So sometimes even if I don't care for a brother, I still find a way to work with them. Or, yes, sir. You know, I yes, try sir. to just walk away and not create that energy. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Well, you know, I always say unity does not require that we all be robots. Mm. You know, diversity can still be had within unity. I appreciate the fact that we don't all see things the same. I appreciate the fact that you have a different lens. I appreciate the fact that we all have different ideological philosophies because that means that there shouldn't be no aspect of problem solution we won't be able to successfully tackle. So I don't think diversity should be feared. Some people fear diversity. I embrace diversity. You know, but with that being said, if I was to go back and look at the Honorable Marcus Garvey and Dr. Doug W.E.B. Dubois, both were Pan-African, is right. So the issue over their disagreement was not so much about theory as it was about envy. Mm -hmm. W.E.B. Dubois was jealous of the Honorable Marcus Garvey. It wasn't about philosophy because after Garvey got deported from America, he started preaching Garveyism. You understand? Right, right, so right. it was never about what the man stood for. It was about the fact that he was the leader and you was not. Right. And I see the same thing in the black consciousness community when it comes to me. There's going to be a lot of envy there because of the credentials and the popularity and so forth and so on. You know, so I get it you know but my thing is uh at the end of the day we can't afford to be jealous of each other we can't afford to you know be wanting to be the only big fish in a small pond you know that hnic syndrome is a big problem with black yes, men yes. and so me myself being who i am and where i am you know i try to practice humility as, as much as i can you know i take a lot of slights and i take them humbly because i know at the end of the day it's bigger than me right. so it's no need to fall out over this if it's going to cause the people to feel like they got to pick and choose between two you know and i don't i don't ever want to have to 
I don't ever want the people to feel like they got to pick and choose between people they perceive to be leaders. I might not perceive them to be a leader, right, you know, right. but they do, you know, so I just try to keep my head low and just keep on pushing. But for me, what keeps me motivated the most is I believe I was born to do the work that I do. You know what I mean? Like I was literally birthed to do this work, you know, and I'm just going to keep on going. I didn't come to it by accident. You know, I came to it by, 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 by divine, you know, ordainment, if you would. So I'm just going to stay true to the path. I appreciate that. Last question I got for you, brother, and then we'll, you know, talk about the event. Yes. We'll end it up with the event. Um, I have a voting initiative. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to really just take a different angle at this. I don't have all the answers. So yes, sir. I would love to hear your input on it. It's called Just Vote, period. And what I'm doing is kind of a lifestyle voting advocacy. Okay. Meeting people where they're at. I'm with it. So, like, I'm at the brunches, I'm at the festivals, I'm with it. I'm at the strip club with it. Mm -hmm. Like, trying to get the cool kids involved yes. with, the, with the voting process, letting yes. them know that they're, they're, you know, their voice um, is their vote. And, and, and either way, because my experience with voting was horrible. Understood. Somebody putting Understood. a clipboard in my face. Yeah. And, you that yeah, like, bullying you into right. doing it. You know, it wasn't cool. So is there any advice or anything that you would say in terms of like, you know, connecting with our young brothers and sisters? Uh, uh, voting? One thing that comes right to mind from the beginning is I think you might want to think about holding some sort of a, a political science class or a study group, even if it's virtual. You know what I mean? Uh, have them develop a philosophical ideology around how they're going to use their vote after they're registered, you know, because people always talk about voting, but we never talk about what is the agenda behind our vote. You know, is this just another empty exercise to make us feel like we're part of America? Right. You know, because for a lot of black people, I think they're voting simply because it's the one thing that they do that makes them feel that they're part of America. Because, you know, we're very, you know, uh, neurotic about our Americanism because authentically it's not there. It's only on paper. It's not in practice. But with the young people, to your question, I think a study group would go well with that. You know, let's come together and study, even if it's just once a month, you know, even if it's on Zoom, get them on there. What do y'all think? How do we organize our vote? What should we be standing for? How can we make our voice count? You know, but you got to have some sort of a philosophical or ideological foundation to that activism. And a lot of our activism isn't rooted in some sort of a vision and it loses people quickly. And another reason why you want to have them organize around a political platform is just as quickly as we want young people to vote, they can be quickly become dis affected through the vote if they don't see change happening enough. Yes. You follow me? Yes. So you say, you told me to vote for Obama. I voted for him twice. We got nothing. You told me to vote for Biden. We got nothing. So if we don't put some activism around that vote, sooner or later, they're going to drop out because they're like, wait a minute, I'm just being exploited here and I'm not getting nothing. Because if you look at us since Dr. King's assassination, 1968, there's been 14 presidential elections, 14 presidential elections. What have black people gotten from it? It's not so much the system as is our lack of a system. We are completely disorganized. You cannot win in a democracy when you are outnumbered unless you speak as a voice. So get them young people to come together as a voice. Right to the president. We want to have a sit down with you. We represent a 500,000 young votes. They're going to listen to you because the elections have been decided by less. That part. Appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Umar. It's going down Saturday. Yes, starts sir. at noon. Miami Gardens. Uh, please pull up. All the information is right on this post as well, man. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you, love King. You, right? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, brother. No doubt. No doubt. Because we had to shift the time. Okay, we don't have time. Right? But I was pushing the event and then what we clip out and you're here. Okay. So I can do okay. whatever you need so me to I, do. Should I send you the link to the eventbrite? Absolutely. I was okay. gonna do it anyway. Okay. But if you want to send it to me, it just makes it easier. Yeah, no, I'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you the link. All right. Your son happened to me with this liquid death. <laughs> I'm coming back to get you guys. Is this a gift <laughs> for him? Huh? No, nah, that was already there. They've okay. been munching on that. They've been munching on that. Dr. Umar, All right. Pleased right, to meet you, DJ Bulletproof. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Um, 
Yes. You on the live? We still on the live from the end. There goes Charlemagne right there. Shout out to see the guy. And I need to get put on the iHeart Media payroll because this is my third or fourth iHeart interview this month. So somebody need to call iHeart and tell them Dr. Umar better get put on the payroll for bringing y'all millions and millions of views. I need to be on your payroll for bringing you millions and millions of views. iHeart Media, you feel me? I need to get on the payroll because I've been iHeart Media it up. I'm gonna see everybody tomorrow. Miami Gardens, 2820 Northwest, 167 Terrace, 12 until 7. I'm going to speak at 4. We got the vendors. We got music. We got performers. And y'all got to sign up and register to be a member of the movement, direct descendants of Africans enslaved in America. Give them the final word. Hey, y'all. Come on out tomorrow. You all, everybody from the, across the African diaspora, Haitians, Jamaicans, Bahamians, Americans, of course, Deus, come on out, Day of the Deus, uh, July 27 tomorrow at Mishcon, 2020 Northwest, 167 Terrace, Mountain Gardens, 33056. Got, again, music, performances, vendors. Um, just come on out, have a good time. Bring your umbrellas, it will be hot. Lawn chairs, hydrate, hydrate. We're gonna have a good old time. Not the, 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 I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> some Zephyr Hills, you know, some Evian. Any black owned water companies? You tell me who you got coming out there. I, I, we need to find a black owned um, water company. You're supposed to have one. I got to find one. I do know one who, who provides filtered water um, to home, but like actual bottled. Somebody needs to do that, actually. Maybe I might start a, a bottled we... water company. You might as well. I know. Call I said first, life. you can't steal my idea. Call it liquid life. Liquid life? I like that. We didn't. We got one last year. We have to do it this year. Okay, come on. I don't know who's going to take it. Excuse me. Unless you do a selfie. my friend hey I know her long yeah come tomorrow oh look at me like that's my phone <laughs> did you take the picture I took a video I, took, I need somebody right. to take it for us excuse me could you take a photo for us hi could you take a photo of us please oh yeah thank you okay. so so kind Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Oh, this is my favorite. These ones, you know, it's kind of fun. Mm. Text me one to post. Okay. Uh, next one is 
one in here? Yes, oh, you remember. I didn't want to pester you. No. Oh, you're so kind. Oh, okay. Thank you so much again, Johnny. All right, Baba, be safe, King. It's more like a pool out here. Swimming pool. I said, why you keep making no those noises? <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn, he said they, they all they all up in your personals. They listening too closely. Tomorrow, Miami Gardens. Tomorrow, Miami Gardens. Miami Gardens. They said, is there any vendor spaces left? Um, tough. Tomorrow's the event. I mean, text me 318 321-0754. Uh, but it's, it's kind of difficult right now at the last minute, but you never know. 